Okay, <clears throat> so welcome to process engineering. Now I kind of view this class as one of the first sort of real uh, serious engineering classes that we're going to be doing. Uh, so the reason why I think of this as kind of one of the first engineering classes is because in this class we're really expected to solve problems. Right? It's not necessarily in chemistry, you learn chemistry, you do chemistry problems. In math, you learn math, you do math problems. Right? But in engineering, we're kind of synthesizing everything together to solve individual problems. So what we're going to be talking about is how do we take everything that you know from numerical methods, from your chemistry class, from your physics classes, and put them all together to solve sort of like uh, word problems like you would have had sort of uh, in primary school. Right? So we're trying to figure out how can we make a million tons of a particular <coughs> chemical, or how do we refine you know, 500,000 barrels of oil a day. And so what we need to do is we're not going to go over any of the individual background material, but we're going to be talking about is strategies of how we synthesize each of those individual steps. So that's kind of the fun part about the class. Uh, the bummer part is that, you know, it gets a little bit tricky sometimes when we're going to be expecting uh, you to grab information from a number of different sources. And so the, the main point of what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you to learn to solve problems in this class. Not sort of just jump through particular hoops and say, okay, now you can balance a redox reaction or something like that, but rather to kind of think about what's the best methodology to solve a particular problem. Because it's not necessarily going to be as linear as previous courses. So a couple of bookkeeping issues, literally. Uh, this is the version that I have and I, I look out of. This is the older version. It's a book by Felder and Rousseau. Now, they have a fourth edition, which I don't have the hardcover, but they gave me a binder version. This is the front page from the binder version. Uh, so this is also uh, totally fine. Uh, <clears throat> the content of the third and the fourth edition is almost identical. The only difference is the problems in the back. I'm not going to be expecting you to have the problems necessarily. In all the homework assignments, I will be uh, writing down the problems so that you can see all of them. Right, so that, that shouldn't be an issue. So if you can find a good cheap version of this one, that's totally fine. If this is the only one you can find, that's okay. If it's electronic, whatever is your preference. Now because there's so many people who have electronic textbooks, it kind of forces our hand a little bit, so we have to do closed book exams, right? Because otherwise then someone's going to have their laptop open and is on a Googling all the questions or something like that. Uh, so we have closed book exams for that purpose, uh, but we do let you have sort of the cheat sheet thing, like one page front and back. And really that's, I think, a good way to actually study. The other thing that uh, I think the 2005 or the third edition comes with, the, the, the newer one might also come with this, it's a study guide. So what this basically does is it takes key problems in the back of the book and it breaks them down step by step uh, and sort of helps you learn the methodology of how we solve the particular problems in the class. Uh, so this may be useful for some. Um, what I recommend is right now your goal is sort of to do whatever it takes to learn uh, as much as possible. Uh, and we'll go over a little bit as to why my strategies are for that in a little bit. But first, uh, let's get this out of the way uh, with the syllabus so we can go on to the fun content of the class. Uh, so for the most part, uh, in years past, I had taught this class somewhat as a flipped format. I'm going to revert back away from that a little bit and go um, towards a more traditional style. Some people really liked the flip class. Some people really didn't like the flip class. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is kind of a hybrid. So we're going to have a lot of uh, online tools available that were already prepared for the flip class format. But then in class, I'm going to kind of go over what I think are the most important conclusions, uh, work through example problems, and all that kind of stuff so you can see how I think through the particular problems. Uh, but let's get the logistics out of the way uh, with the syllabus. So hopefully everyone has one of those in front of you. Uh, I am Michael Hipfner. I will be the instructor. Uh, for the TAs, uh, we have Caitlin. Oh, I forgot to put her last name <laughs> on the syllabus. Uh, Caitlin is right here. So she will be a TA. And Trent Brown, I think he took the class last year. He will also be a TA. What I'll be doing is I'll be sending out a doodle poll or some other poll to figure out when everyone's availability is so we can have office hours so that, you know, at least everyone can attend one of the office hours throughout the semester. Uh, so YouTube channel, I'll talk about this in a little bit. Uh, there'll be, there's a lot of online content that we're going to have to be able to go over. Uh, so course description, we cover that a little bit. Uh, but basically, uh, <clears throat> traditional chemical engineering is 
kind of petrochemicals, oil and gas, and now we've expanded a bit more into pharmaceuticals and some other uh, areas in general. Uh, but for this class, we're going to be kind of viewing chemical engineering in a bit of an old school way to start off uh, with a solid foundation. That basically means, how do I take really cheap, readily available chemicals and convert them to high value, hard to produce chemicals? So whoever can do that more efficiently, basically meaning, how much money do I have to pay in chemicals and supplies to burn and capital equipment, and how much can I sell it for uh, on the other end? Right? That's really traditional chemical engineering. So we're not building a lawnmower per se. Right? We're building a commodity chemical product or a process that creates a product. And so what we're going to be doing is going over all of the necessary steps that we need to do double checks and consistencies and work our way through how do we take, you know, Hydrogen and uh, hydrogen and water, and turn it into methanol that you can sell. Or how do you convert, you know, cellulosic feedstock to a biofuel or something like that? Right. That's really what the traditional chemical engineering works out with. Uh, the website that we're mostly using uh, is Canvas. I'll go through that in a little bit. We'll have all the links for it. Course objectives. Please take some time and read through this. These are kind of the tasks that you will be uh, able to accomplish if things go well in this class for you. Uh, and it's a list of things. Uh, one here at the bottom, uh, software, Excel and MATLAB. Who here is comfortable with Excel, MATLAB, or Python, or some other coding language? Very good, okay. I will not, okay, this is not a math class. This is not a chemistry class, right? So I don't need to see any work done by hand ever, right? I never need to see work done by hand. What I do need to see is the appropriate equation set up and then a description of how you solved the equation. That's all I need to see. So if it's a system of equations, if it's a nonlinear equation, you'll have to use some sort of a electronic tool. You could solve these in Excel, you could solve them in MATLAB, Mathematica, Maple, whatever system you like to use. I very highly recommend, and now is a good time to start, I use religiously, I have, I have a TI-89. From, from high school. Uh, I think this is a phenomenal calculator because it can solve nonlinear equations just by typing them in, basically. So even if I have to solve a linear equation, right, like y equals mx plus b, I'll just plug it into the calculator to make it easier. For an exam, this is extremely useful, right? Some nonlinear equations, maybe you can rearrange and solve for it. But you might, you might find that you save yourself a lot of time just by investing a bit in a calculator that can do these solutions really rapidly. For the homework, the homework's mostly going to require a bit more powerful of tools. I mean, you could do it in this, but it, it might be a little bit more harmonized bit, right? So again, this is not a math class. So use whatever tools are at your disposal to solve the problems. Okay. Uh, here is the breakdown of the stuff that you'll have to actually do uh, to get your grade. <laughs> Homework, 10%. Uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, quizzes, we're going to have regular quizzes in the class. They're going to be on Fridays. And if you look at the back page, there is an outline of when all the quizzes are going to be and when the homeworks are due. Uh, exams, we have three exams, uh, and then a final, and then a project, which is basically like uh, doing a whole chemical process. So you get to see every single part and do the balance on every single one. And now I'm going to go through each individual section with some details. Okay, so homework, I promise, if you want to do well in this class, most all of your time will be spent on the homework. And you'll say, well, that's not fair. It's only 10% of the grade, right? But homework is where you actually learn. So in-class time is basically me telling you how to do the homework. The homework is where all the learning actually happens. So if you do the homework, you don't do the homework, it's only a difference of 10% of your grade on that particular section. But I promise you, if you do not do the homework, the exam portion of the grade will not go well at all. So in the homework, I will be assigning it. And uh, most of the problems, I'll, I'll post the solutions right away. So you'll have the homework, you'll have the solutions. There'll maybe only be a handful of questions where you don't have the solutions. You'll have to kind of you know, think through that and work, work with your friends or something like that to kind of uh, get to the solution. Right? But the key thing is use the solutions responsibly. Use it as sort of a, like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm on the right track, or I have no idea what to do. Let me see how he starts the problem off, right? I don't recommend just copying over the solutions. Things will go very badly, 
right? The homework is where you do all of the learning. And so this basically just kind of summarizes that. Uh, I will accept late homework, uh, both a 50% penalty, uh, and also neatness counts. You know, uh, the, the, the mood of the grader is typically uh, representative of the niceness of the grading. Uh, the cost of paper is cheap. So if it takes you a little bit extra paper to better understand or better explain things, I highly recommend you do that. Okay, quizzes. Uh, does everyone have access to an internet-enabled device in the classroom, like a smartphone? If you do not, please come talk to me and, you know, I don't want, I don't want you to single yourself out. But basically for the quizzes, uh, I will send out a link to a Google Forms document and basically you'll answer the questions on the Google Form because it automatically grades, it's nice and easy, and we'll do that so it only takes about 5-10 minutes when we have these quizzes. The quizzes are not intended to be difficult. The quizzes are just intended to basically reward those who are keeping up on the content as it comes out. So they should be really quick, easy questions, take about 5-10 minutes of class, about once a week or once every other week or so. The lowest two quizzes will be dropped, so if you have to miss class, I don't need to hear about it, right? As long as you know, you're not chronically missing classes, right? The lowest two are going to be dropped, so you don't have to worry about it at all. No questions asked. Okay, uh, da, da, da. okay so I have basically a guideline here for <coughs> formatting um, spreadsheets and, and, and computer code. Please go through and look at it. Throughout the semester, I'll be showing you examples of, of, of Excel spreadsheets that I actually use <coughs> on my daily life, not just to teach. And I, I have a particular way of formatting things that I think is really helpful. The more that you rely on computer code, what ends up happening is the more of your time is spent in troubleshooting. Right? A lot of times, solving any particular problems in this class is not going to be hard. But finding an error in your code that prevents you from getting the right answer, that's where you're going to be spending most of your time. So the better you actually format your spreadsheets or your code, the easier it's going to be in the long run for you to get to the right answer. Let's see, what else we got? <clears throat> okay, exams. Okay, so I already mentioned exams are going to be closed book. We will have a cheat sheet, one page front and back. Uh, I think making the cheat sheet is a really helpful way to help you study. Uh, the unique thing about uh, how I do the grades in this, or the, the exams in this class is since there's, I know there's a lot of exams, four exams is kind of a lot, but it works out really nicely. So what we end up doing is that the first three exams correspond to three different topics in the class. One is basically engineering fundamentals. The second section is material balances, right? How much mass goes into a system, how much mass goes out, if you have a reactor, how much fuel do you need, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the third section is energy balances, right? How much energy does it take to run this chemical plant, for example? The final exam is broken into four sections, right? The first three correspond to the three uh, midterm exams, and the last one is a comprehensive section. If you bomb the first exam, or the second, or the third, you can completely erase that, or not say that, I don't think I completely erase it, I think I average it. Yes. You can't completely erase it, but I will average whatever you get on the final for that particular section with your first, second, or third midterm. Right? So if you bomb completely zero, you don't even show up for the first exam, and you ace that section on the final, you'll get 50%. Right? So this is sort of there as an incentive to make sure that no one kind of loses hope mid-semester and gives up. Uh, so we bro I broke up the, the midterm exams into those individual sections so that everyone has an opportunity to uh, find some salvation. Uh, regrades, basically, uh, I'll, you know, I will entertain regrades, but there's a specific policy. It uh, has to be within one week, so please read, read over that. Uh, academic misconduct. Hopefully everyone knows what constitutes cheating. The technical term is academic misconduct. Please don't do it, otherwise bad things will happen. Uh, grade cutoffs, these are the worst case scenarios. right? So I will be no harsher than this. Right? I can lower these to be more generous, but they're not going to be any worse than this right here. And then a couple of other pieces of information. Uh, I want to really highlight the students with disabilities section. Right? I want everyone to be playing on a you know, level playing field. So if you have test anxiety, dyslexia, any other learning disability, <coughs> please, at your earliest convenience, go visit the Center for Dis Student, uh, what is it, CDS? I can't remember what it stands for right now. Center for Disability Services, I think. So they can, they can provide 
quiet testing environments, uh, extra time, right? So make sure that you are giving yourself the best opportunities to succeed. And do not feel bad about using the CDS services. Not a single person, not myself, not any faculty member or instructor in the entire university is going to make any sort of judgment about it. So please uh, make sure that um, if you do have any issues with exams, please go visit them and get an assessment done. Okay, any questions on the syllabus? Hopefully fairly straightforward. So, to continue on, if I can find my mouse. Okay. There it is, okay. So this is the Canvas web page. Uh, I'll be updating it with, this is the main page, so hopefully when everyone goes to the Canvas site, which it is live now, this is what you see. Uh, I want to go over a couple things, so I'll, I'll fill in the office hours once we figure out when the best times for that are. Uh, so a couple of things, so this online course schedule, that'll take you to a, a Google Docs spreadsheet that is impossible to read right now. Uh, but basically, this is the same syllabus or schedule that you have um, on the syllabus. Uh, these links over here are links to videos that either I have created or have been created by a source that I deem to be reputable. Uh, specifically, Learn Chemi. It's a web page run out of the University of Colorado. So everything that we talk about in class, you will have a, basically three ways of getting the information. One, in class, I'm going to talk about it. Two, we've got the screen recording. And three, we have pre-recorded lectures that I made um, on a tablet. So every single thing that we're talking about, we have basically explained, well, I'd say you know, two-ish ways, right? Reviewing it after the fact, <coughs> reviewing your notes, and also with the content there. So anything, and then what I'll also be doing here is in this column here where it says recording, if you can see that, uh, that is where I will be uploading a link to this screencast or you know, in lecture recording uh, what's going on here. Okay, and then the next one, uh, in class recordings, this is going to be a YouTube playlist which is currently empty because we haven't had any classes, but then this is gonna list all of the classes with the dates. And the last link here is YouTube video playlist. These are the videos that I have created uh, with uh, a tablet. This is, this is of my In this lecture, we're going to be talking Whoa. about humidity. Yeah, this is great. Which is an application of liquid. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> so, so if you're not sick of my voice by the end of the semester, you're not trying hard enough. Okay, so that, that's what's going to go on here. So, lots of material is available. Right, so many video recordings, uh, you won't even know what to do with Okay, any questions? I'm going to kill the computer portion of today's class. With about a half hour left. Okay, any questions? And hopefully this microphone will pick up questions uh, and any uh, snide comments. So uh, if you really want to be judged badly, uh, come sit right by the microphone. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so my style is, well, the style for this particular class is going to be a chalkboard type writing system. Now, people have studied, hello everyone. So people have studied, what is the best way to take notes? So, as it turns out, the best way to take notes depends on what information you're trying to recall. If someone is throwing at you a huge number of statistics and information, the best way to take notes is the fastest way that you can write, basically. So if you can type faster than you can write, which is, I think, the case for most people, 
if I'm just throwing at you facts and statistics, right, like the, the, the number of, of monkeys in, in Brazil or something like that, right, it's better for you just to hammer it right out and you can get it down on the computer. However, if you're trying to learn concepts, writing notes by hand actually helps you retain more information on the concepts. But if you were to compare computer notes versus handwritten notes, the computer notes would be significantly more extensive. But when you're writing selectively, you know, taking your own notes by hand, right, you actually have to do a layer of processing of the information to figure out, okay, what is the most important thing to write down? Which words can I skip? Which words can I not skip? So the goal of this class, and I think the goal of most engineering classes, is we want to teach you how to solve problems, right? We don't care if you use your book, you use the computer, blah, 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 right? We basically want to make sure that you understand the problem-solving system and methodologies. And so for that case, I think it oftentimes is very helpful to be physically writing stuff out by hand to help you learn. So you will be able to get, as, get less information down, but hopefully we've got a recording, and please review these recordings and let me know if they're garbage, if you can't see anything or whatnot, if they're useful, if they're not useful, and I can try and see if I can modify them um, accordingly.